Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Politics here at The Hindu with me, Nistula Hedbar, where we unpack the news making the headlines in domestic politics. This week, uh, Parliament wound its acrimonious way through the monsoon session of Parliament with the opposition in an uproar over the sealing off of the premises of the Congress-backed uh, newspaper, the National Herald, by the Enforcement Directorate and the summoning of leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha, Malikarjun Kharge, by the same agency relating to the National Herald case. Mr. Kharge was interrogated or questioned for about eight hours, after which he was let go. Now, the Shiv Sena, the Uddhav Thakre faction, was also in an uproar over the arrest of Rajya Sabha MP Sanjay Raut. They, all of this came up in the, in the Rajya Sabha and uh, the Lok Sabha periodically, frequently, and uh, uh, led to many adjournments, etc. Now, uh, matters were not helped much when the Supreme Court upheld the various provisions of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, the PMLA, in a judgment on July 27th, with uh, 17 opposition parties uh, releasing a common statement after that, asking for a review of the Supreme Court's orders. They were saying that... Uh, the, up, uh, the upholding of the PMLA's provisions was something that would uh, harm democracy in the country and that uh, this particular uh, order of the Supreme Court uh, would hopefully have a short life. This was what the opposition parties had been saying and basically there was a lot of uh, acrimony, anger, protest, etc. that happened last week over this entire issue. Uh, opposition parties alleged that there was vendetta politics on behalf of the ruling party, the BJP, and that central agencies were being used for the same. The BJP vehemently denied such allegations and said that the actions by the agencies were as per ongoing investigations on cases filed by other parties. While all of this was happening, however, the Supreme Court came up with an interesting order with regard to the questions of freebies being offered by political parties and governments in power in the run-up to uh, polls, whether these could be termed as bribes to the voter or not. This was basically a PIL which had been filed and the court took up this matter uh, and pronounced uh, an interesting order on it. Uh, well, this came, uh, this came up just as Prime Minister Narendra Modi worried over the rising uh, problems with regard to state finances had raised the issue of freebies and the harmful effect that it had had on uh, state finances. We have looked at this uh, speech by Prime Minister Modi. Uh, he made this speech while inaugurating the Bundel Khand uh, Expressway a couple of weeks ago and he came up with the with the, the formulation called Revri for the, uh, the name that he had given, a colloquial Hindi name that he had given to uh, freebies and of course we at Talking Politics have referred to it as Ravery Novex. This we uh, talked about in a very recent episode of Talking Politics and while many may say that as far as uh, a series like ours is concerned it would be early to be revisiting a subject but since it pertains to something where even an incremental shift could elicit big time changes in the way that elections are fought and politics around uh, welfare is shaped, I felt that we should look at what the Supreme Court has said on this issues, uh, issue and whether this takes the issue even one step forward uh, to basically being a debate uh, uh, that all political parties are talking about and, public, uh, and a debate that has an impact on public life. Supreme Court on uh, Wednesday, uh, August 3rd, uh, said that uh, uh, basically it was interested in uh, uh, looking and examining this question of uh, freebies being offered to voters in the run-up to elections, etc. Also expressed doubts that uh, Parliament in itself may not be able to effectively debate the issue of doing away with what it termed irrational uh, freebies. Uh, what we also said on an episode of Ravery Nomics was that not a single political party wants to take away freebies and that was in fact uh, the opinion of the Supreme Court as well. The central government's law officer uh, arguing in this case, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, 
said that the government uh, substantially and in principle supported doing away with the practice of promising freebies to voters. Now, senior advocate Kapil Sibbal, who was also arguing in the case, said that the issue was political and economic in nature and did not just concern elections. He suggested that the parliament will have to debate the issue. At this, uh, uh, Chief Justice of India, N.B. Ramana, in whose court this matter was being heard, uh, said, and I quote, do you think there will be a debate in Parliament? He sounded extremely pessimistic about uh, the possibility of such a debate uh, being honestly debated in Parliament. He said, these days, everyone wants freebies. Not a single political party will allow freebies to be taken away. We take the side of the ordinary people, the downtrodden. Their welfare has to be taken care of. We are not just looking at this as another problem during election time. We are looking at the national economic well-being. So when all of this was said, what is it that the Supreme Court then suggested? It suggested uh, the setting up of a specialized body composed of people who could, in their own words, dispassionately examine the problem. That is, uh, uh, people who were one degree removed from the process of fighting elections. The Supreme Court said that this body should be made up of members uh, of the Niti Aayog, the River Reserve Bank of India, etc., etc. Justice Ramana asked all parties in the case to come up with the proposal on the composition of a committee that can go into the issue. Uh, and here I quote him, ultimately, it is the election commission and the government which have to implement these suggestions, he said. Well, while the Supreme Court suggested one way forward, Ravenomics, despite uh, concerns over state finances, off-budget borrowings flagged by Finance Secretary T.V. Somanathan during a meeting of Chief Secretaries with Prime Minister Modi in June. Again, part of our earlier video on bravery economics is not an easy riddle to solve. Possibly why we are also coming back to the topic so soon after we had gone into it earlier. Now here, the basic question is not just... Uh, about merit versus non-merit based subsidies. That is, which freebie is genuinely addressing a need of the marginalized sections and which is an attractive top-up freebie. Uh, it's, a, it's not just an economic question, it is a political issue as competitive politics relies on different political parties coming up with innovative ways to appeal to voters via identity politics or the politics of creating a set of beneficiaries of uh, public finance, through public finance, through the distribution of public finance, which owe their loyalty to you as the source of these uh, freebies. Now, there is a tendency at this point to say that offering freebies or schemes to woo the voter is not new and is part of the political culture of the country, uh, which is, of course, partly true. But... It is also true that in the past, via legislations for fiscal discipline like uh, the FRBM Act, uh, etc., India has navigated its way through perilous waters of profligacy in public finance. Anybody looking at the story of India's economic reforms, the state, the balance of payment crisis that faced India in 1991 when then Prime Minister Narasimha Rao and then Finance Minister Manmohan Singh uh, took on the task of navigating India through that particular crisis will know that uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, anger among opposition parties also on certain uh, steps taken by the government uh, to uh, uh, bring economic reforms into India and responsible fiscal behavior as mandated uh, because India was at the receiving end of a loan, large loan amount from the International Monetary Fund and had to show that it was a responsible country which will not default on uh, sovereign debts, etc. 
and uh, therefore will follow a path of fiscal responsibility. All of this happened, but at a very, very basic level, the political executive at that time, plus the political parties, recognized that India, India had to uh, pull together as a country. All opinions, all shades of opinions of the opposition had to pull together as a country uh, to be on the same page, to be fiscally responsible. Now, the FRBM Act is just one example of what I'm saying. The FRBM Act was uh, passed in the late 1990s. Basically, they said that uh, governments uh, in the uh, you know in various states of this country cannot spend more than 3.5 percent of the GDP uh, um, of their budget. So uh, in their budget, and therefore uh, try to restrict the fiscal deficit numbers to manageable uh, rates. Uh, but it is also a fact, however, that in recent years state finances have been under stress, and there has been a tendency towards unbridled. Uh, populism and spending uh, and also of course there has been uh, partisanship to a level not earlier seen in the political class as well so uh, Prime Minister Modi may be referring to uh, his genuine worry that state finances are in trouble but various state governments have also pointed out that the center has always also been pretty generous in terms of uh, welfare economics and distribution of welfare goodies to the public at large. And while the uh, Supreme Court order is pointing to the fact that all institutions of public life should come together to sort this issue out, what is really needed therefore at this time, as it was in the 1990s, it is for political parties to come together to find a solution, uh, which in the current state uh, the nadir of relationships uh, between the ruling BJP and the political and the political parties in the opposition, it is a big, big ask. Now, at this point, we can only hope that better sense at some point prevails. The fact that even the Supreme Court is uh, mindful of uh, profligacy with regard to state finances and with regard to public finances in the country uh, says a lot. And hopefully, this will... Uh, weigh on all the stakeholders involved in this situation. This is all I have for you this week. Um, uh, thank you for watching. I will be back next week.